Hey guys, we're back with the Vortex Boost from Arma, and in this video, we're gonna upgrade this from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, and Arma's nice enough to come up with a traction kit for this car, and it's $39, at least that's what it was when we bought it, and we just went to the hobby store and picked one up. And this is designed specifically for the Boost series, and it comes with differentials, it comes with drive axles, it comes with the center drive axle. Everything you're gonna need to turn that into a four wheel drive is within this box. And we're gonna go ahead and install that today and show you how easy that can be. And the cool thing is, is this is a three step progression. If you buy one of these brand new and you're, like, if you're brand new and you buy one of these, this is two wheel drive and it'll teach you how to run the throttle more efficiently so you can keep it going in the right direction. Once you get that mastered, you can pop the four wheel drive kit into it and that'll get you off into different terrain and more fun to play with it. And then when you're done, you can swap the transfer case, motor speed control, and I would recommend changing the radio as well. Then that becomes the 3S monster it's destined to be. You get three levels of learning with this system. I think it's pretty cool. Let's get this installed. Check this out. So let's get the tires and wheels off and we'll do both sides at the same time and we'll just tuck one underneath the front end just to hold the components up. All right, now I like to detach the steering links and the top link. It gives you more flexibility when you're doing your install here. So. We're gonna take two screws out of each side. There we go. And now we wanna spin this nut on and that gives you something to push against cause you gotta get that pin to move so that you can get the hub apart. There we go. Just like that. We'll remove the pin. And now we can get the axle out. Do the same thing on the other side. go and a little pressure you can feel it give when it does decide to move there we go and just to keep the components all in the right place we're just going to put them back together for a temporary here I hate losing parts now we need to take the two top screws out of the bumper support we also need to get the shocks detached at the bottom, and you'll understand why we're doing that in a moment here. Now on the bottom, these are 2.5 millimeter and there's four of them. We'll go ahead and back all of these out. And no need to worry about whether or not which one went where, they're all the same size. And this is why we had to detach all that. Inside here, this is the plug and this keeps all the dirt and debris out if you're running two wheel drive. So let's get the differential out of the box. There we go. And let's put it in place. This will only go in one way, so don't worry about whether or not you got it in correctly. Gently fish it through the bearings here. And then a little bit of lube. There we go. Now let's put the bolts back in on the bottom.
And I know I'm using a machine here, but this is a screwdriver, not an impact or a drill, and it turns really slowly. We've just sped up the video to save time. Remember guys, always go nice and slow with mechanical device. You don't want to melt and strip out the plastic. So let's go ahead and reattach the shock absorbers. And we need to put the two screws back for the bumper support. We'll reconnect the top link here. There we go. And we'll do the steering link as well. We will do the same thing for both sides. Okay, now working the components in a little bit, make sure that they don't bind and they are a little bit bound here. So you wanna pry this through so that the pin can go in nice and easily. Now, sometimes the drive shafts don't wanna go through the bearings and they can be a little stubborn. A little persistence here is all that's needed. Install the pin and the hub and make sure that it sits on the pin properly. There we go, and we'll do the same thing for the other side. And then we'll get the wheel and tire on and snug it down. Now the thing about this is, this can be a little tight, so you want to pull here, and this will pull that drive axle through the bearings and give you enough space there so the wheel will spin freely. If it's not spinning freely, guys, you need to give it a little tug here, just like this, and you should feel it pop when it goes in place. Now with the drive shaft for the center, it comes set up with the long one, but this is a short chassis, so we need to put this short one in. That end goes to the front and it slips right on the spline and then this end goes toward the back, set it on the hub and just roll the vehicle and it pops right in place. There you go. So there you go. That's the installation and it wasn't as simple as I thought it was going to be. It well, it was, but it wasn't. And there's an issue here with the front end. And what it is, is these plastic housings don't want to go, the drive shafts don't want to go through the bearings all that well, so they bind up a little bit. And if you noticed, we were trying to work it in some to get them in. Once we got them in, we had to pry them through a little bit. Once you can get the nut on the wheel, it sucked it right through. But don't forget, once you suck it up tight like that, grip the car and pull on the tire, it'll give a little bit, giving you that space between the hub and the bearing, very important. Also, the gearing was a little bit tight on the differential, but I don't think it's too bad. I think it'll wear in, in just about no time. So that all went pretty good. All in all, it looks just like the other one now, so this should function properly.
So if you haven't already, don't forget to bash that like button and help our content spread. You know, we like doing these kind of things, but you know, the thing is we're doing this to be helpful and that's the whole idea here. If you've never done something like this, that can seem like a pretty daunting prospect. One nice thing about it though, the instructions do a great job of explaining how to get there and that is a wonderful thing. If you guys have anything you'd like to add to this, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, for AJ Jam Studios, I'm AJ Sand. Keep wrenching, guys.